Ah, uh, well, breathing, yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, uh, have you already uploaded the video? Uh, no, no, I will. I will talk in Yes, I just. Okay. Okay. Should I start? Yep. Okay. <coughs> My talk is about uh, non critical strings. I mean, or sometimes called also palacal strings, which means uh, uh, strings which are living in real dimension two, three, four not on critical dimension when uh, so after all it's necessary to make some kind of reduction of higher dimension to real, but just attempt to quantize uh, for better quantum theory for strings in real dimensions. Originally, one should let me give you some brief review of old story history how the strings appeared. It's originally, they appeared as an attempt to describe a strong interaction of elementary particles. Uh, in the sometime, I think, 19, in the middle of 60s, of 19th century, at 20th century, sorry. Uh, it, was, it was observed that particle scattering has kind of duality When, which means if you consider this type of channels, they are, they, these processes can be connected with other, with these processes in S channel, can be connected with processes in T channel by some kind of analytic transformation. And Veneziano wrote some amplitudes which, which has uh, this property. Then uh, Nambu string, which is called Nambu string, was used by Saska and Nielsen to formulate a theory which can could exhibit this property, could 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 give this property. So initially, it was attempt to get to describe strong interaction physics. It was even before of confinement of quarks, and therefore it's more interesting. So then, but it's quickly appeared that if you will try. To quantize the strings, then Lorentz, you, 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 you are using some kind of light cone coordinates. And then, in order to restore Lorentz invariance in a, of the target di d dimensional space, uh, the Lorentz invariance will be maintained if the dimension is 26 for bosonic strings and then 10 for supersymmetric strings. Super strings. 
So long time people didn't know what to do. The strategy was to change simply. Mm, people forget about strong interaction states. Okay, since low energy limit of string theory is, has a scalar, uh, massless particles of vector type, gauge, gauge field, gravitational tensor field like graviton. Uh, let's use it as a something which unifying all these interactions. At the end of, uh, at the beginning of 80s, Polyakov understood what is the problem, why these critical dimensions appearing and how, uh, what, is, what is necessary to take into account in order to uh, make a quantization of string in any dimensions. So the observation was following. I, I will repeat a little bit previous talk. Sorry for that. <laughs> it's unnecessary somehow. So uh, the action of the bamboo string is is uh, the following: as it's, it's an array of the surface, array of the worksheet of the string when it's. Uh, upon the time is developing. G here is a metric, which is induced metric, DAX, BBX. G is a determinant, determinant of GAB. In order to handle the problem, Palakov changed this action with the more appropriate quadratic one, introducing independent metrics. And then action become a G now are independent fields, independent metric, and X psi is a map of two dimensional surface as two dimensional space uh, and you say uh, m2 into the d dimensional euclidean space this action was already was mentioned has two symmetries uh, reparameterization which is gravitational which means any coordinate transformation And the whale, the first reparameterization, second is whale, which is uh, you can multiply metric GAB by arbitrary function, arbitrary scalar functions. The, the, these symmetries are classical, sim, cl symmetries of classical disaction. But if we quantize it, which means, for example, calculate partition function of the theory. Which means integrate over metric coordinates in this action. I will call it Palakov action despite of indeed it was written first by the Vec company but real uh, interest to this action appeared after Palakov therefore sometimes calling Palakov action uh, if you will calculate this partition function S depends from metric and uh, coordinates of the worksheet You will see that there is a following problem. Uh, one can, one could, like, could expect that using these symmetries, we can eliminate off all dependence of the action from the metric. I can simply classically I can kill them. Therefore, if I will calculate this object, it also will not depend 
the z, z will not depend any background metric of g if I will maintain it somewhere there. But uh, it appears it's not the case because of presence of anomaly, which means which means that uh, uh, due to divergences in a quantum theory, when we should make a regularization, we, can maint we cannot maintain both symmetries. We should we can keep only one of that, one of those, and the next second uh, will be broken. And the uh, origin is the of that is the following. Uh, for example, if I will try to calculate integral over x, the action can be written, this action can be written as via Laplacian, uh, minus integral uh, scalar Laplacian. And uh, formally, therefore, is this integral as a quadratic, as a Gaussian integral over x is. It will give a determinant of this Laplace, and I will mark it in, uh, as a delta zero minus one. Uh, And the question, what kind of Laplacian we would like to consider? Uh, Reparamization invariant or while invariant? Because I can write square root of g here and divide the square root g here. Then it will, this object will keep reparamization invariance. Or keep it like this. Then while invariance is broken. So, uh, That means that if, for example, I will fix some gauge on metric, like GAB equal to so a formal gauge. So depending what kind of regularization of quantum theory I'm considering, would like to keep, it will depend either on rho, if it's um, keeping reparamization invariance, or I can work in a conformal invariant way, then rho will disappear, but I will get dependence of the uh, object of the uh, reparamization of the fields, a JB prime, the following. In the infinitesimal way, it can be written as epsilon A, nabla A, epsilon B, plus nabla B, epsilon A where epsilon is infinitesimal reparamization, which means it's just C A plus epsilon A, which depends C. So this determinant can be calculated in a reparamization invariant way, and the answer is Answer is exponent minus uh, minus one over forty eight pi uh, d integral So uh, another p important point is when we are fixing 
some gauge, this conformal gauge, conformal gauge, yes, JB equal to rho delta AB. Then we should and would like to pass from integration of dg over, we should pass over conformal factor and reparameterization epsilon because any metric can be replaced by these two independent coordinates. Then we have to take into account so-called Fajepapov uh, factor determinant of uh, fixing the appropriate gauge. This will produce, uh, it, it can be easily found what kind of operator co corresponding to this gauge fixing. So most general form transformation of metric in infinitesimal form is delta phi g plus nabla a epsilon b plus nabla b epsilon a. So the 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 lens in this space is delta j b square, which will give uh, delta phi plus nabla c epsilon c square plus sum f a b phi b a where f a b is nabla a epsilon b plus nabla b epsilon a minus minus mm, Delta A B nabla C epsilon C. So if you will plug it, this is a conformal transformation. It doesn't contribute into the Jacobian of this transformation. If you will consider F A B square here, is it easy to extract? You will see that mm, it is quadratic in epsilon, and the coefficients. This is Laplacian on uh, vectors, epsilon. Epsilon are vectors. This is Laplacian on vectors. And therefore, if I would like to, to pass from integration over matrix to these variables, dg equal d phi, d epsilon, and I should write here Jacobian, which is a determinant on this one point. In other, yeah, I, I present it in the easiest way, but it is the same what is for the pop of determinant. <coughs> so, uh, therefore, uh, Palakov understood that what is necessary to do now in order to work with this action in covariant form in any dimension. So uh, you should add, because of gauge fixing, this Fajepapov term. In determinant, you can write it as a so-called BC system, uh, which I, I will let's I will mark this uh, this action as Fajepapov is unimportant in a moment. The and full action become that quadratic one, Palakov, plus the Popov term. And since now appeared as anomalies these two determinants, which are, which, which are breaking conformal symmetry. But I would like to have a conformal invariant, invariant theory. If I will add these two determinants, this one and the integral over x, uh, logarithm delta 0 plus log 
delta AB to this action. I will mark it as S Liouville. Then the full theory will, will be both reparameterization and conformal invariant. And that's a uh, correct way to quantize string in any dimension. So what Palakov, the message of Palakov was in order correctly to quantize string in non-critical dimension, besides original action, besides Fadev Popov term, you have to add anomalous term with appropriate coefficients to the to these two in order to restore uh, all classical symmetries which we had originally. So it's appeared that this determinant giving the same type, all Laplacians giving the same type of so-called Liouville action, which I have written there. But the, the, instead of coefficient, uh, coefficient D will be 26. So uh, the sum of these two actions is This one in gauge fixed form, when the conformal gauge was fixed. But one can write it in covariant form, which means simply this part should be replaced by some kind of non-local action. The R is Gauss curvature, scalar quantity. And uh, this is green function for scalar fields. 1 over delta. So the coefficient is the same. The, we, one can easily rewrite this action in a slightly other way, uh, freeing uh, from this non-locality, introducing scalar fields just by kind of hubbard stratanovich transformation. Then it, it will become, we will get a action, a theory of d minus 26, 48 pi. One half. If you now integrate over field phi, you will restore this one. Just exponent, uh, this exponent, integral uh, exponent, integral d phi. Yes, if I if you will integrate this one. Ah, if you will fix a conformal metric, which means GAB is equal to rho uh, exponent phi delta AB, eh, Kronecker delta AB, then R becoming uh, uh, R becoming uh, d square log r, I don't remember coefficients, but coefficient is correctly written, the coefficient should be this one, 
and then you this delta square in conformal delta zero is um, d square. So you have an extra d square b here and two d squares there. They will cancel each other. You will come this local form. It's trivial, some exercise, one can do it. But this this is other way to by introducing ex additional scalar field to write uh, write the term which is necessary to add to Popov and Fadzev Popov in order to declare after all that that theory is a right correct theory which will maintain all symmetries, Lorentz invariance in external space and uh, Lorentz, I mean SOD invariance in this case. Uh, and uh, if one can handle work with this action, then we will have a uh, string theory in non-critical dimensions and hopefully the spectrum of all elementary particles recorded there. But, yeah. This one? This is just the Gaussian integral. If you will integrate by Hubbard's extract. No, 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 no. This is covariant form. Uh, the question was how from here can be this one get it? These are different. These two are different. This is covariant form. This is gauge fixed form. You see, there is no square root of g here. The, the square root of g is this row only here. This is cosmological term. But this is fully covariant form. So uh, then what happened? Uh, <coughs> it's appeared that it's possible to work with this theory. It was made by into a very nice articles by Francois David and Disler and Kawai, where the authors calculated uh, various physical quantities, critical indexes in this theory. Mm, the major variable which was calculated, so-called string susceptibility. I will now present how it's easily one can calculate to find string susceptibility in this string theory, you know, just using simple scaling arguments. And from where it will be visible that what is the problem? What kind of problem we getting after that? It will be visible that all this theory can be done, ABC can be normally calculated only for, <coughs> for, for theories when, so it's, first I should say that it's, it's clear that I can replace this bosonic coordinate X with any kind of matter fields. It's no difference, I can, instead of bosons, I can consider plus some fermions, the different amount, and any other fields one can write quadratic action. Each of that, each of those fields has its own central charge, and each will produce additional contribution to Liouville action of this type, of that type, where instead of D, one should write central charge of all those fields under consideration. So uh, one can, I would like to say one can, of course, easily consider more more general problem. Consider you have a round surfaces, random, and uh, which means metric. And fields there, it's a gra two dimensional gravitational theory, fields there not only bosonic coordinates of the surface, X, but fermionic fields all other fields, I don't know, uh, one can consider uh, also some <laughs> sigma models, group elements, say G. No, no, it's better, so S, depending on C, which is from some group and some kind of sigma models. Anything in, in, in principle, one can consider it there. Each of those configurations has their own central charge and they produce 
some contribution into conformal anomaly, which is necessary to take into account in a total final action in order to restore all symmetries. So, the, I will show that all this theory can work properly. Uh, everything is nice when the central charge of all these matter fields together is less than or equal to one. Since it's code connected with dimension for bosonic string, one can say that if one can understand in this way theory of uh, strings in dimensions less than uh, equal to one. Still, it's not two, three, four. So how to calculate the things in dimensions two, three, four? It's in the moment is unclear, and that was a problem when this Palakov approach to string theory somehow was stuck in the middle of 19th, 19th last, of last century. Uh, this was, I, I, I will calculate now this with string susceptibility, uh, but I would like to say, but this analytic approach was not alone. Meantime, was parallelly was developing two other approaches. One is numerical. When uh, discretization of the word sheet uh, by triangles was made and the problems were formulated uh, on this discretized version and numerically calculated the same, for example, string susceptibility for various models and which were compared with the prediction of Palaco model. And also, in parallel, so-called matrix models were formulated. Totally different approach, I will talk, uh, talk today about that, which uh, again was producing the quantities, calculations, which can be, uh, which I will do now. For example, things, calculation of things sus capability, uh, which we have obtained uh, in, a, say, uh, by other technique. Since all these results were giving the same uh, values, there was no doubt that everything is correct and uh, perfect. But again, everything for this case. So they, therefore, desires appearing whether it's possible to cross this barrier and enter to the region where you can consider on a worksheet not only matter fields with central charge less than one, but any. For example, spin chains, different integrable models, Vesumino, Witten, Novikov, action, which all of those has central charge more than one. Whether it's possible to do, to say something about that. Uh, I will say that, I don't have answer about in a moment, but uh, in one direction, uh, formulation of matrix model. It's possible to do, and they will talk about that next week, during my next talk. But uh, today, I would, therefore I will now present calculations of the strings are kept in an analytic way in Palakov approach and for how the same thing can be calculated by standard matrix model within a standard matrix model approach. And then clear will be how one should modify, change the matrix model in order to incorporate uh, other central charges and move further. Not only formulate the problem, but try to calculate something. So uh, how string susceptibility can be calculated in Palakov approach? So uh, we have added this so-called, this is called Liouville action, this Liouville action to the, to the original Palakov string. I will write instead of D, better to write uh, Central charge 
and Cn. So, uh, yes, in this form, this object So, uh, no, I, I, I should. Uh, I made some mistake here. The coefficient is not this one. The coefficient will be defined by Q. This the, here will be one over eight pi. Uh, he is correct, but here when we're adding some this covariant Liouville action to the to the mm, to Palakov and Fazer Popov uh, and transforming into here with coefficient one again eight pi. Uh, the desire is this object also has its central charge, which is equal which is equal to one this level center one plus three q square and the uh, so since we have to add level term in a way that calcul that cancelled two central charges from here from here is coming c matter fit minus 26 from fadev popov then plus the c level this is the condition to 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 have a uh, all uh, conformal and the representation invariant restored. From here, it's clear that C Liu will equal uh, 26 minus C matter, which is was written before, and in this form written, it's not necessarily to write as a coefficient. It's as a, it's, it will appear the coefficient if we were working uh, just in conformal gauge like that. In covariant form, it's not necessary. In covariant form, all this stuff should be written in a, in a way that itself is a covariant, which means uh, you see a representation invariant is maintained, and I, I, I have to add here some coefficient alpha, uh, which, which, which uh, making this operator representation invariant, which means its conformal weight should be one. All other uh, others other terms are representation invariant. <coughs> so uh, now uh, having uh, now let's consider this action and make make a conformal transformation. Now phi is going to phi minus uh, some. Constant divided by alpha. Alpha is from the this coefficient, which should be fixed by a condition that conformal dimension with this exponential operator is equal to one. This means. That exponent minus one half alpha alpha plus q dimension is uh, this one is equal to one, and from here one can find alpha as there are two solutions here. There are two solutions here, alpha plus minus equal to one half q plus minus q square minus eight. And from here, if you will plug here one plus the q square, is it to get that uh, q 
Q is equal to, we will plug it here, 25, C, 25 minus C matter divided by 3. So, if you will plug this Q here, you will get minus So, from here it's visible that you can see that <coughs> if uh, if D, D, sorry, central charge CM is larger than 1 and less than 25, if then larger than one, then we have complex variables, and uh, that may cause some problem connecting with unitarity. Uh, now I will write expression also for string susceptibility. We will see that this combination will appear there also, and therefore, uh, therefore. Uh, uh, since critical index cannot be complex, everything will reasonably working when the C is less than 1. Otherwise, it, is, uh, it will raise questions which is not clear how to answer. So, uh, now how to calculate the string susceptibility? Uh, if we will make this transformation, phi is going phi minus rho over alpha, action will get some contribution from this term. To give minus, if we will plug in phi here rho divided by alpha, this phi will go out from integral, integral over r by Gauss bonus theorem is equal to equal twice one minus h. H is the number of handles in the of the closed surfaces, and then this will get factor two one minus h rho divided by alpha. This term will produce that. Therefore, <coughs> suppose I am interesting <coughs> in the surfaces. Uh, with the fixed array, then which means I am interested in a partition function of this type. This A is area integral dg dx all, all this stuff exponent minus S Palakov S Ajay Popov minus S Liouville. And here I am writing delta function which fixes array of the surface equal to A, which means I'm writing this type of delta function. So instead of square root of G, I have this term. This is the square root of G covariant form of square root of g. Exponent alpha phi to the minus a so this is by definition partition function for a fixed uh, fluctuating surface with fixed array a. <coughs> 
So if we will make now that, that transformation, from this point will come exponent extra term. Will come uh, uh, exponent minus twice one minus h rho alpha. Let me correct that the coefficient in let him correct. Sorry, there is no I think we have missed some coefficient one half here. Therefore there is no the one half. There is no this this thing here. So from this will come uh, this uh, this uh, this factor. Right? Multiplied by Q. And uh, here this also will produce exponent minus rho which I can take away of integral uh, I can take away integral and right here a exponent of rho from here is coming which I can take it away from exponent minus rho. And uh, one can see that I will get uh, the same expression for partition function, but now for this area. So I I'm getting following functional relations. Z A is equal exponent one minus 1 minus h uh, rho q uh, alpha minus rho z exponent exponent minus rho a so if a is equal to formally I will mark it as exponent rho then this is equal to exponent a with this coefficient 1 minus h q divided by alpha minus 1. Usually this all this stuff one marks as gamma minus 3. And this gamma is called string susceptivity, which means the partition function of the surfaces uh, with fixed area A has this type of critical index a in some power and this uh, this gamma is called string susceptibility so if you will plug here q you will you will get expression of string susceptibility from uh, from central charge of matter field which you are considering on random surface. Sorry? This step? This is definition of gamma. Other, this one, this coefficient. It's come from uh, two contribution, from here. You see, if you will, if you will add here, uh, if you will add here to phi, uh, you will add rho divided by alpha. Rho alpha in order to kill this alpha and the, to get here rho. Uh, then you, this rho, rho is constant. You can take rho out of integral. Then you will, this is constant. You will getting pure integral over r which is twice 1 minus h by Gauss Bernoulli theorem. So you are getting this extra exponential factor to this, this this contribution to this sum. So this is a little bit this constant contribution to the action. Yes. 
Next come from delta function, exponent minus rho. Area, this because we have now this functional relation. If you define rho as exponent rho, we find rho, is, rho was arbitrary, but let's connect it with A. If uh, rho is like that, then it's 1. This is constant. And exponent minus rho here, minus rho, it becomes area A with the, with the rest. So uh, this is a general statement, but uh, you know there are so-called minimal models in statistical physics with central charge. Cm equal to 1 minus 6 divided by m, small like m plus 1. They have less central charge less than 1, therefore these calculations are applicable to them. If you will plug this central charge into the expression of Q over there, here, this Q you plug, or alpha plus minus also over there, you calculate. <laughs> so put all the known variables here, or gamma m, you'll get 1 minus m. So if you will calculate, uh, you, you know, it, that means you know one of the major characteristics of the theory when the minimal models are put into the fluctuating surface and uh, <coughs> what kind of string susceptibility you can have from in that theory is calculated just as 1 over m by using this simple scaling arguments. Yes, ah, 1 over m is... Uh, Gamma, sorry, I should say, gamma zero, ag equal to zero. This simple expression. Otherwise, it's slightly complicated. Uh, yeah, it's, it is what it is. When ag equal to one is no curvature there. When ag equal to one, uh, you can eliminate r from this uh, Liouville action. So, uh, in general, one can consider important thing I should say. If you will consider uh, now any other operator from in minimal series of any other series which has central charge less than one, say you have an operator, uh, some operator five with some conformal dimension delta zero. Say we have operator five with conformal dimension delta zero. The, the way to write, uh, to consider this action preserving reparameterization invariant is necessarily to multiply this operator with some additional gravitational fact factor with Liouville field phi in, order, in a way that its conformal dimension should be one. This will allow you to find, uh, to find this B factor beta. This is called kind of gravitational dressing. And then if you will calculate uh, different variables, you should uh, different correlators. It's necessary to take into account this gravitational dressing. That means that usually conformal dimensions of operator, which you have in a flat case, flat cases, when you starting this consider this here in a fluctuating surface, their conformal dimensions are changing.
So this is about analytic part, and I would like now to pass to matrix matrix models. How, in other way, one can get, for example, this result using totally different from from um, first side totally different approach to random surfaces. And consider uh, matrix Hermitian matrix n by n size with the action minus one half trace m square plus some some interacting terms v depending mm, some interacting terms uh, v zero depending on m. It can be any polynomial of m under the trace. Okay, in this like this trace. And if uh, the partition function of this series, the, the, the following functional integral, sorry, and here I should uh, extract one over uh, square root of g, coupling constant for interacting terms. So this V0 can be, for example, cubic term, trace M cube, or quartic or any, any higher degree. So therefore, this, this answer is depends on this coupling, G. One can, it's a kind of quantum mechanic of matrices. There is no derivatives, no no kinetic term and uh, quadratic part defines kind of propagator of this type m alpha beta m alpha prime beta prime is equal to delta uh, alpha alpha prime delta beta beta prime and when you are considering this functional integral you can uh, get the following picture. Uh, so one can express matrix as matrix propagator as two line with opposite uh, directions. Interaction can be expressed as a product of matrices. M, M, M. For example, this is M cube. Then, as in Feynman rules, you expand this exponent of this potential over series of different degrees of M. If it's diagram of order N, uh, first I should make a rescaling of M. Let, let me make a correct rescaling in order to calculate for the if I will make a rescaling m uh, m square root of n then uh, I will get here factor this will this object will be slightly changed you will will get factor n, and here we will get uh, ah, this factor n will be common for all. And I, I should consider here, sorry, g over square root of n. Originally, I'm considering matrix model g over square root of n. After rescaling the square root of n, will go out, it will get a g. Or one can immediately start n, multiply with this object. So uh, let's let's uh, see what will pr what will produce this integral. Say suppose I have uh, uh, n <coughs> each vertex here. You see each vertex by Feynman rules producing uh, g and n. Right? Each vertex uh, produces 
n each propagator produce one over n because it is here in front. So if I have many vertices, so there is a trace over the this face. So each face produces also n. So I, I have uh, if I will mark, for example, now. Uh, vertices by a letter V, each will come with the factor N. Edges, sides, with factor 1 over N, and faces, again, with N. Therefore, I will get some integral where there will be N after integrating over M for particle Feynman diagram. It will give N in power of V uh, minus E plus F. By definition, this is Euler characteristic. It is, uh, this is N to 1 minus H. So, uh, or I will mark also some compiler characteristic. So, uh, depending of the type of diagram I am considering for matrices, I will have this this Euler characteristic there, and uh, therefore. Besides of this factor, I will have also g in power of uh, uh, number of vertices, which was v. So the partition function, therefore, becoming g in power of v, uh, n, power of all characteristics, sum of all Feynman diagrams, which means sum over all these type of configurations you, which you will get. Then note that if we were considering, for example, only cubic, uh, only cubic interaction here, so we have all, also all, only three, three uh, matrices associating with vertex. I can pass to dual lattice considering middle point of faces and connected with them line and each each vertex will be surrounded with triangle and uh, doing that I will get uh, dual lattice consisting only on triangles so I will get triangulated some kind of surface so any in principle it's a mathematical fact that any any surface can be discretized by triangulations without lose, lose of any inf information. So therefore, uh, sum over this diagram equivalent to sum over the triangulated surfaces. And therefore, it is equivalent sum over the surfaces, triangulated surfaces from these factors. If I will denote G as exponent uh, minus beta and n denote as exponent gamma then this will become sum of all triangulated surfaces uh, exponent uh, g I'm sorry exponent minus beta a v is a si number of triangles which is array and uh, plus uh, gamma Euler characteristic. So it's, uh, you can recognize here, zero dimensional number string. I mean, it's a surface is embedded in zero dimensional space. You have pure area and plus, plus 
some factor topological factors due to topology of the mm, surface is gamma is a string coupling constant. When you are changing, when you have uh, many handles, the number of handles H will, for each handle you are associating, there is interaction, you are associating coupling gamma. So this matrix model producing string, discretized version of string action. And therefore, one can consider that uh, uh, if we can extract from here some critical behavior, some how to extract how this object will behave, the, how it depends from area, then we can compare this factor, this, curve, this index here. What is what, what it will be here? So with one calculate it with this one and see whether the, it is the same series or not. If all set of critical index is coinciding, of course it is the same series. So how now to calculate this sum on this matrix integral, which formally can be expressed like that, but it is necessary to calculate over M and extract some kind of critical behavior concerning of how it depends uh, from array of this, this uh, Feynman, array of this Feynman diagram or array of the surface. So, in general, So clearly, we can have, we will calculating this, all, uh, all Feynman diagrams will produce all topologies, all different type of kappas, and I can separate uh, in this sum the contribution of different topologies, different surfaces there. Say, for example, first one will, will come here with N, uh, Euler characteristic is, uh, For sphere edge is zero, see kappa is uh, two. Therefore, the first term is n square uh, z zero g, which means uh, th this is a contribution from all spheres to the partition function. The next one is zero z one. It is the contribution of torus and so on. So, n uh, two twice one minus h z h G is a contribution of, uh, to, to the partition function from, from the uh, surfaces with, uh, G, uh, with H handles. So one can expect that this, the contribution, the Z, ZH or fixed H, is behaving like, first of all, it is, if it's diagram of order n, and let's say order of diagram, each integral here, each interaction produces g. Therefore, it will give a g uh, normalized by some, some, some kind of g c will be calculated later in power of n. And one can expect some, uh, some power behavior of, of n in this part of uh, this sum, and uh, I will mark it. Uh, uh, I will mark it as gamma minus two kappa over two minus one. Why it's so complicated? We will see later. So if if it's true, then and some over all, all uh, the, the n is order of Feynman diagram, which, which what kind of, 
how many vertices we have in that uh, term. So, uh, by sub subtle point, one can estimate what, what is the major n contributing to this sum. It will be easy to find that n, it, it will be uh, average n, will be some, it's proportional to 1 over g minus 1 over the log g over gc, which is 1 over g minus g critical. We'll see how it's appearing. So from other side, remember that I, when we, I was drawing this picture, number of sides, number of vertexes in Feynman diagrams, n, was on dual lattice was associating with number of triangles. Therefore, it is area. Therefore, this value is uh, also size of average area of the of this triangulated object. So we see that if there is a critical point, that there, there is a divergence of this type at this point. So very large amount of vertices contributing to the partition function, and very large areas are contributing, contributing into the partition function. So then if we will plug this n into this sum here. We will get uh, this is of order 1 because g is of order g. No, sorry. Instead of n, we plug 1 over g. We will get 1 over g minus g critical gamma minus 2 kappa half minus 1. This is constant I'm taking away. Then under I have some of geometric progression which will produce another one. G minus g critical. 1 minus g over g critical. And all together will give G minus G critical. This will cancel this one. Gamma minus 2. Kappa divided minus, sorry, 2 minus gamma. 2 minus gamma divided by 2. Okay, this is behavior of uh, ZH with fixed, uh, for up, which defined by average size of array or uh, number of diagrams, uh, order of diagram. So, uh, For example, if you will plug here for uh, kappa is 2 for, for sphere, these two will cancel, we will have a 2 minus gamma, so which means our average size of A is defined by G minus G critical 2 minus gamma. From here, the same thing we can observe. So. But now, that this is expectation. This we are guessing some kind of critical behavior for partition function. But now let's try calculate integral over m by other way in order to, to see whether we can extract this type of critical behavior. This, this guess is correct or not?
So we have dm e minus. I will join now all this matrix term quadratic or interaction together into the some potential v from m trace. Uh, And this is object which I, uh, in which I am interested. And let's calculate it by diagonalizing matrix M with unitary matrices U. Then this integral will become D lambda D U uh, exponent minus V sum over all uh, lambda I I Lambda i are eigenvalues of m, which means the, the, the diagonal entities of lambda. Lambda are eigenvalues. And we have here Jacobian of this transformation, which is which called van der Mond determinant, which is where this delta lambda is product lambda j minus lambda i. j is less than i. So this diagonalization procedure demands to write here under the Jacobian, which has this form. And this is Jacobian, which is called under Mond determinant. So. Uh, Next, what is necessary to do? To observe that this object can be understood as a determinant, just that's why it's called Van der Mond, from the uh, matrix which has from, of this type, G minus one I, which is determinant of the following type. Uh, one, the first element, lambda one, n minus 1, 1, lambda 2, n minus 1, and so on. 1, lambda n, n minus 1. Of determinant of this matrix is this. So I can replace this one, this object with determinant lambda j minus 1 i square. Then we have to introduce so-called orthogonal polynomials. Definition of orthogonal polynomials is the following. Uh, I will mark them as pn lambda. They are associated which with the particular potential V. So let's we have a V lambda. This is a function expressing potential which we are considering. The orthogonal polynomials by definition have the following are the following polynomials. They are exist and have a following property. Some edge uh, N delta N N. For with each f v, you, you can associate polynomials with this property. They are, they, they, they are forming complete set as a polynomials. Okay. Ah, beside also that the first term, their first term, the highest degree, is come comes with coefficient one. This is a definition of h somehow. So the first term is lambda in power of m plus lower terms. So uh, easy to see that here uh, since the highest degree of pn is lambda n, I can replace this object with determinant from orthogonal polynomial. I can write it p uh, pi from lambda j minus 1 square. Because uh, in this determinant, in this matrix, only, okay, 
only highest term, highest lambda term will contribute. The other terms will 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 have the same uh, the same degree as another term from this row, and th this this contribution will give us zero. So how many minutes? Ten minutes? Uh, ten minutes? Okay, okay. So uh, then I need some technical. Uh, properties of these orthogonal polynomials in order to try to express uh, this determinant as a as something. For example, uh, due to this orthogonality, and we, here I have square, right? Imagine that this determinant is expressed as a sum of, you know, the formula uh, determinant, say p n lambda m is uh, sum over all permutations minus one degree of permutation p one lambda p i one just a second. What is the formula? How it's written? Yeah. P i n minus one from lambda uh, j lambda n lambda n uh, lambda n here. I one lambda i1, p i n minus 1, lambda i n, no, lambda 1, sorry, lambda n. And some or all, all type of permutation. Now imagine this, this determinant is here and I have to take a square and integrate over, over uh, eigenvalues lambda here the lambda, of all eigenvalues. Uh, each lambda entering in the de determinant in one P, and I have in square, I have it, there is its par partner. So each lambda contributing only in two P's in this product. Uh, and due to this property, if this lambda, the N, N and M indexes are different, then it will produce zero. Therefore, in this product, only the terms with consigning i's for consigning lambdas will produce, uh, will give a non-zero contribution. And they, they will give just h with corresponding index i. And so uh, if you will consider all possible coincidence, they precisely n factorial. Therefore, finally, this integral will give us a product of H K K from one to N. With coefficient N factorial. It's it's easy to see. But it's quadratic P giving each age uh, will only fit coinciding uh, having uh, the only those terms which have the same i index for for lambda, and then each this pairs produced h, and therefore we have the product of ages, uh, and this type of terms is n factorial. So I can I can now extract h zero uh, from the uh, h zero in power of n from the product and write it as a h k by divided by h k minus one in power of uh, n minus k. k is running from one to n. This is identity. This is identity uh, and I would like to mark this ratio as f k. Now, 
Now, so somehow the term this partition function is calculated. But I, at large n limit, I, I can organize some kind of continuum limit uh, introducing the following variables. Let's define k divided by n as a psi and um, fk divided by n as f psi. Therefore, exponent w, the effective, this is an action, this is, uh, the effective action is w, log of that. So for w, I will, if I will take log, uh, log of all this object, uh, will give a w divided by n square, then it will become 1 over n, uh, sum over all k's, n minus k. I'm simply taking log from here divided by n log fk. Using this continuum limit, this will produce integral from 0, 1, d psi, because this is k is running from 1 to n, and so psi is running 0, 1. Uh, 1 minus psi at log f psi. So this is the partition function in continuum limit. Now, uh, let's consider lambda, some properties of orthogonal polynomials, lambda pn from lambda. Since it is uh, also polynom, one can expand over full set of themselves. So it, is, it will be equal Pn plus 1, because highest degree will be lambda in one degree larger, plus some coefficient Rn, Pn minus 1 lambda. Am I right? Yes. Uh, for simplicity, I'm considering potential, which is even in lambda in degrees. Therefore, uh, lambda has the potential asymmetry lam lambda to minus lambda. And due to the, that uh, fact, uh, the coefficient of this expansion, odd coefficient of this expansion will, will, will become zero. Therefore, this is, this is kind of identical. Where R run, I don't know what is that. And that it's not necessary to know. Absolutely, yes, in principle. So uh, let us now cal calculate integral E minus V Pn lambda Pn. Pn minus one. From one side, if I will consider this term lambda pn minus 1, just a second, yes, it will, it will have a highest degree lambda in power of n, the same highest degree like pn, therefore it will give agen by definition by definition of orthogonal polynomials. From other side, if I will consider this term and use this product, the contribution of this Pn plus 1 with Pn minus 1 will give 0, while this will give Rn. So it will give Rn multiplied by Agn. Agn minus 1. So we, we, we see we, we have identity, we have um, uh, Rn expressed by a ratio of, Rn is a ratio of Hn divided by Hn minus 1. Uh, then I marked this object also F. So it is the F. It is Fn. So Fn calculated, provided that we know for orthogonal co 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 polynomials their ages. They, 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 they are part of the uh, definition. So, uh, therefore, we have 
uh, this property now. And let's consider the major equation in matrix theories, matrix models. The following equation. Let's consider integral E minus V. I need five minutes more. Is it? Okay. Five minutes that I'm coming to the end. Pn uh, prime lambda Pn. So this is from one side, it is, uh, if I will take a derivative of largest term, it will produce n lambda n minus 1. Lambda n minus 1 multiplied by lambda will give again lambda n. It will convert it, uh, integrate it with p n, give a n. So it will give H, uh, n a n. And from other side, I uh, can use lambda p n. Uh, lambda pn expansion uh, is its expansion. Uh, pn plus one will not contribute because they will have with pn prime different de highest degree. It will produce zero. And while uh, this another one will give rn another term, and will remain d minus p p zero prime uh, pn minus one. Sorry, pn prime. N minus 1. And I can make integration by part. E minus V, V prime. Here will be Pn, Pn minus 1. This equation is major equation in this matrix model business. Uh, now what is what one can do? Choose particular V. Uh, plug it here, then integrals can be taken using again properties of this part orthogonal polynomials. And for example, <coughs> I will bring only one example and declare the f more general uh, answer. Uh, for example, if you will consider uh, potential of the type V is equal to 1 over 2G lambda square plus lambda to the 4 n plus highest degree, say lambda 6, some uh, uh, n square, some b. Then I can calculate v, uh, v uh, prime and so on, plug it here. Uh, I will get from this equation the following equation on Rn. n times g equal Rn plus Two divided by n, Rn, Rn plus one, plus Rn plus Rn minus one, plus cubic terms over R. In continuum limit, I replace Rn over R by R. I'm introducing function Rn. Over, uh, over n is equal to r, which depends from psi. And that's equal, by definition, rm was f, so it is f psi. So what we will get, that n, uh, uh, n divided by large n will give a psi. So psi g is equal to uh, r plus 6 r squared. which I can express as some critical g, this slide. I can extract the quadratic part simply. I can express it as fg, the g critical plus some coefficient, which I will mark w to prime, um, r psi minus r critical square. It's triviality. So from here, you see that R psi minus R critical square is behaving like uh, uh, G, G critical minus psi G, and which means that G critical minus 
arc psi is f psi, from here f psi minus f critical will behave g critical minus g psi one half. Finally, yeah. So uh, this is this one half. If you will plug here m equal to one, uh, two. If you will consider larger potential with higher degrees and imagine that you have a, this function w which will appear after plugging into the string equation the stuff. Uh, it has a derivative, zero derivatives up in, at some point up to the m order. It depends from a potential. Then the particular mo uh, this, uh, potential will create e1 over m, and that will correspond to the 1 over m, another minimal model. So uh, we see that this mm, matrix models, just by their structure, contain some, have some multi-critical behavior, each of which corresponds to the minimal models. So, uh, that's, that's the end. So uh, finalizing, as uh, I would like to say the, that uh, the, the picture is complete. There is a continuum limit, continuum theory and um, and the uh, matrix model which produce the same result. It's true if you calculate another critical indexes, it, the, they were also will coincide. Moreover, numerical calculations produce the same things. Therefore. There is a complete understanding for minimal models on uh, uh, fluctuating surfaces. The continuation will be in two weeks, how to cross this barrier to see larger than one. So I'm finished, thank you. Sorry.